PC Electronics. This is the part two of NASAC ISRO uh, Technical Assistance Solutions. Okay, so let us see what is the first question. And also I request you if you have not seen the part one, please do watch the part one in which I have discussed a lot of questions. Uh, okay, so let us see the first question for today's video. The seven segment display as shown below needs programming in a common cathode style. That means bit to be high for LED to glow. So this is a seven segment display. I hope you have seen a seven segment display. You maybe uh, you maybe have done uh, experiments using this seven segment display while uh, doing programming with uh, in the phasing of eight zero five one or any of those uh, labs you have used. So this is a seven segment display. What is the code for seven without a dot in the order? So this is the order of the various uh, variables or various bits for this seven segments display. So this seven segment display has various segments A, B, C, D, E, F and E, F and G. And also there is a dot here and which this dot is represented using DP. Okay and also here the uh, the values, the points are being taken out. You have to connect uh, wires to these, these terminals to get the particular segment to glow or the LED of that segment to glow, you have to connect wires to these terminals. Anyway, let us not go into the deeper session. You have a order of this particular bits or particular uh, points of all the segments. So this is the order and you have to get a code for seven. You need to get a seven here without the dot. That is, you don't need the dot to glow. You want a 7 to be displayed on the 7 segment display. So how will a 7 look like? This 7 in a 7 segment uh, display won't look like this. It will look like only this. This will be your 7. So for that 7 to glow in the 7 segment display, what all segments of the display we need to glow? That is A, B and C. So we need A to be glowing, B to be glowing and C to be glowing. We don't want a dot, so we don't want DP and also the, all the other segments we don't want to glow or we want them to remain off. Okay, so we need a A, B and C. So we need one at A, one at B and one at C. Now this is the order of giving the values to the seven segment display. So what will be the, the input data given to this particular uh, variables for dp it is 0 g it is 0 f it is 0 e it is 0 d it is 0 and for c it is 1 b it is 1 and for a it is 1 so this is the this is the input value we have to give to the seven segment display to get a seven okay now this is the value. Now what is this corresponding to the hex? It is equal to 0x07, right? 0x07 we have to give, our, give as the input to get our 7 segment display to produce a 7. So the correct answer here is option B is the correct answer. I hope this is clear. So if you are being asked not only 7, any of the uh, any of the numbers to be glowing on this uh, seven segment display. You have to first write the number and see which all segments you want. And also see that whether you want a dot or not. So if it is another number, say if it is a zero, you want A, B, C, D, E and F. So that is a zero. And if it is a eight means you want all the segments to be glowing. And if you want, uh, let it be a four, what will be like that F, G, then B and C. 4 will look like this, right? This will be a 4. So, you have to first consider what is a number. Then you have to think how much uh, of, or how many number of segments or which all segments you want to be glowing. Then uh, give the input data likewise. So, that is how you have to approach this 7 segment display problem. Next question is this. When communication happens only in one direction all the time, then it is dash A simplex, B full duplex, C half duplex, D one of uh, sorry, D none of the above. 
so uh, in communication systems based on the direction of uh, sending of uh, the messages and receiving of messages we ca classify the type of communication as three types so the communication type we can call them as three type simplex half duplex then full duplex now first one is simplex communication simplex communication means the communication is only happening in one direction for example uh, consider that we are placing a radio and we are hearing from the radio okay only the radio is uh, sending some messages we cannot talk back to the radio okay so such a communication is called a simplex communication so in this simplex communication there is a sender then there is a receiver. So in simplex mode of communication, there is a sender and there is a receiver. And this sender is sending uh, data to the receiver and the receiver is only receiving the data. Such a communication is called a simplex mode of communication. Now, in if the sender is sending the data and the receiver is also sending back some data to the sender, then the communication mode is called half duplex communication but here both the uh, transfer cannot happen simultaneously that is the sender is sending the data to the receiver side uh, once and then the receiver is sending back some data to the receiver uh, sorry the receiver is sending back some data to the sender but this both of this transfer cannot happen at the same time is called a half duplex communication so this com communication uh, will happen once and then this one okay so both this transfer two-way transfer cannot happen simultaneously or at same time such a communication is called half duplex and if both this transfer or both this communication is happening at the same time means it is called full duplex communication that is the sender can send the data to a receiver and the receiver can send back some data to the sender at the same time if both the communication links can be active at the same time, then it is called a full duplex communication. So these are the three type of or three modes of communication. So here what is being asked when communication happens only in one direction all the time. That means only in one direction that is the sender is sending the data to the receiver only. Then it is called a simplex mode of communication and the correct answer is option A. Next question. If the SOP form of a lookup table is given as sigma a, B, uh, ABC, that is 1, 3, 6, 7, the expression is dash. So, in order to solve this, we will draw a simple K map. That is a three variable K map. You have the value of A is 0, 1. B and C values are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 and 1, 0. The 1s are present. Since it is a sigma, we are going for SOP expression. It is also being given that it is SOP. So, we are going to mark 1 in these given positions. Okay. So, we have done a video on, that is we have done two videos, videos on KMAP simplification. If you have a doubt with KMAP, please do watch that video. 1, 3, 6, 7. So, it is at 1, 3, 6 and 7. So, how can you mark this? 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, you can mark this. You can pair these two ones and these two ones. Now, what is expression for this first pair? It is A bar then C. For the next two pair, it is plus A B. So, the expression is this. A bar C plus A B is your expression. Okay. So, the correct option is A is the correct option. A bar C plus A B. Okay. So, uh, if you have such expression to be solved, you have to Go for K-map simplification. Here the correct answer is option A is your correct answer. Question is this. A down converter mixer. What is its function? A converts IF to IF. That is intermediate frequency to intermediate frequency. B converts RF to IF. C converts IF to RF. D converts RF to RF. So we know that in order to actually send a signal, we have to convert the signal from a lower frequency to a higher frequency. Right. And then while receiving the signal, we convert the higher frequency signal to lower frequency. And these are achieved with the help of up converters and down converters, right? So what is the function of a down converter? Down converter is used in the receiver path. 
Okay, so in the receiver path, we'll be receiving a radio frequency RF signal. We have to convert it back to the intermediate frequency and then we have to convert back to the original frequency. Likewise, the process is happening. So what is the function of a down converter? Down converter is actually converting RF, that is a radio frequency to intermediate frequency, which is a lower value as compared to the RF value. That is, we are actually reducing the frequency from RF to IF. So that is a function of a down converter. So the correct option here is converts RF to IF. Now if the question was what is the function of a up converter means it converts intermediate frequency IF to a higher frequency RF. So the answer is converts IF to RF for a up converter. So here the question answer is option B is your correct answer. Next question. A signal with a bandwidth of 40 kilohertz is to be digitized of the following which sampling rate is chosen. So while digitizing a signal we have to first sample the signal then we have to quantize the signal right. So for sampling we have to choose a sampling rate following the Nyquist criteria. So I have seen a lot of questions of this manner. Please do uh, get familiarized with the Nyquist criteria. We know that the Nyquist criteria According to Nyquist criteria, Fs or sampling rate should be greater than or equal to 2 times the bandwidth or 2 times the maximum frequency. Here, the bandwidth is 40 kilohertz, so it should be equal to 2 into 40, that is equal to Fs should be greater than or equal to 80 kilohertz is the frequency or the sampling rate we are choosing. Okay, so here from the option, uh, A is 50 kilohertz, no. B is 100 kilohertz, yes it is possible. C is 40, no. D is 78. So we have to choose the sampling rate as per the Nyquist criteria in order to perfectly reconstruct the signal back to the original state. So while digitizing, we have to go for the Nyquist sampling. So here the correct answer is option B which is 100 kilohertz. Only then we can perfectly reconstruct the signal. So here if the bandwidth is 40 kilohertz means sampling rate should be greater than or equal to 80 kilohertz. So it should be 100 kilohertz can be chosen. So the correct answer is option B is the correct answer. Next question. In the instruction MOV move AL comma 34H which is the op code. Okay so this is a this is an instruction out of this instruction there is a op code and which is that. Here the uh, instruction is MOV AL comma 34H. So while a move instruction is being uh, executed, we have a source and a destination. So we are actually going to move a particular data to a particular destination. Source to destination we are going to move. Or we are going to move here 34H we are going to move. It is an immediate value to AL we are moving. Okay, so here this is source and this is the destination. Now, which is the opcode? So, this is the opcode. MOV is the opcode. Operation code or opcode is MOV. Move is the opcode here. Okay, so the correct answer is B. MOV is the opcode here. The next question that we are going to discuss is this. Which of the following is a normal way to turn on a SCR or a silicon control rectifier? So, the silicon control rectifier is having three terminals. An anode, a cathode and a key terminal. Right, so this is a silicon control rectifier. So what are the ways in which we can uh, turn on the silicon control rectifier? There are various ways in which we can turn on the silicon control rectifier. The first one is forward voltage triggering. Uh, triggering. Then second one is gate triggering. Then third one is DV by DT triggering. Fourth one is thermal triggering. And fifth one is light triggering. So these are the various ways in which actually we can turn on the SCR or silicon control rectifier. First one is forward voltage triggering. It is a basic uh, method in which we apply a voltage greater than the blocking voltage. That is called forward voltage triggering. If you apply a current to the gate region, there are three terminals, anode, cathode and gate. If you apply a particular value of current to the gate uh, to turn on the device, it is called gate triggering. If you apply a voltage with respect, that is varying with respect to time, dv, dt triggering, it is then thermal triggering and light triggering also. The most simple way is a forward voltage triggering. So here the options are 
injecting anode current b increasing voltage beyond blocking voltage c injecting cathode current d injecting gate current so the basic or the the normal way is to increase the voltage beyond the blocking voltage so the correct answer here is option b which is called the forward voltage trigger okay so the correct answer here is option b and these are the various ways in which we can turn on the silicon control rectifier so if you want to know that these are the various ways a forward voltage triggering gate triggering dvd tri triggering thermal and light triggering okay next question in which layer of the tcp ip protocol the ip address is handled a process or application layer b host to host transport layer c internet layer d network layer tcp ip protocol layer consists of four layers first one is the application layer then the transport layer then the internet layer then the last one is network access layer so these are the various layers network layer so these are the various layers of a tcp ip protocol and in this uh, four layers there is a specific layer called internet layer and this internet layer handles the ip address okay so the correct answer here is option c internet layer handles the ip address and these are the various layers of a tcp ip application layer transport layer internet layer and network access layer okay so these are the various layers of the tcp ip protocol and the ip address is handled by the internet layer which is specifically for internet uh, handling so the internet layer handles the ip address or internet protocol address ip address is been handled by the internet layer so these are the questions which i have included in this video i hope that this video was useful for your preparation if you are preparing for isro technical assistant examination you should always watch these videos till all the parts because uh, this is uh, something related to the uh, examination you can expect or the question types you can expect okay uh, so i hope that this video was useful for your preparation if yes please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with maximum of friends who is preparing for isro technical assistant examination and also if you are preparing for afcat examination you can watch these videos because the afcat examination uh, pattern or the questions are much simpler compared to these uh, technical assistant examinations because they are mostly concentrating on the theory questions only okay so i hope that uh, this video was useful for all of you guys if yes please do give it a thumbs up and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thank you